Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to start uh, the YIES lecture meeting, 375th lecture. And uh, the lecturer is Mr. Fumio Kishida, the 101st Prime Minister of Japan. And the course forward for realizing a new form of capitalism under the Kishida Initiative is the title. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the kind introduction. My name is Kishida, the Prime Minister of Japan. This is the 375th lecture. I heard YIES lecture with a long tradition. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be invited as a lecturer for this traditional important uh, meeting. After I took the office of the Prime Minister of Japan, in the latter half of this year, many things happened. Rapidly changing uh, environment was what I faced. I had some difficulties, but I came to the end of the year. Uh, for the LDP presidential election, I decided to run for it, and it's been four months since then. On the 26th of August, I announced to run for the president of LDP. I feel it was only yesterday, but after that, there was this harsh presidential election process on the 30th of September. I was elected president of LDP on the 4th of October. I was designated as the 100th prime minister of Japan on the 4th of October. At that time, the House of uh, Representatives tenure was coming to a close. That's four years tenure. And uh, there would be a political vacuum if uh, uh, the election would be postponed. That was the situation. We tried to uh, avoid or shorten uh, the political vacuum looking at the COVID-19 situation and uh, ver uh, various politicking between the ruling parties and the opposition parties, I considered many various points. And only 10 days after I assumed the post of the prime minister, I dissolved the House of Rep Representatives. I think I was the first prime minister to dissolve uh, the House of uh, Representatives after 10 days of assuming office. And then we went into the election. Mass media uh, predicted the LDP would not reach the majority. It was a very uh, harsh uh, uh, evaluation. If I had lost in that uh, election, the 100th Prime Minister's tenure could have ended in 30 days or so. Uh, looking back at the Japanese history, that would, be, that would have been the shortest uh, 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 government, uh, 54 days of Higashi Kunyume administration um, uh, in, uh, back in 1940s, that was a president. But anyway, if the LDP had lost in the election, I, my name la uh, could have lasted as the prime minister with the shortest uh, tenure, with the uh, understanding of the support of uh, many people against the prediction of the mass media, we got 261 seats. So as a result, I was designated as 101st Prime Minister of Japan, and I have steered uh, this administration since then. Dissolving the House of Representatives in 10 days to go into the election, that was a huge bet as a politician. As a result, in the election, uh, we could uh, have the victory and uh, started the new administration. I think it has been 54 days ever since I became the prime minister. So I overcame the risk of a shortest administration. 
as Prime Minister, I uh, looked at the response to the COVID-19. I took care of the economic measures, uh, diplomacy, uh, securities. Various challenges faced me. And during this period, consistently, I have been thinking that in making judgment on policies, what would be the yardstick? Ultimately, benefits of the Japanese people, what would be the best for the Japanese people? I think that was the yardstick. Even if something would incur heavy burden on the shoulders of the Japanese people, I would make such a decision. Even once determined government policies in face of changes in situation, I would not adhere to the precedents. Without hesitation, I would respond flexibly. That is my basic policy. Under this orientation policy, I have tackled various challenges. Because I was given time today, let me discuss the big crisis for Japanese nationals, that is COVID-19, and the response to COVID-19. I will discuss that. And for regeneration of Japanese economy, what is important is a new economic model, what I call new form of capitalism. I will discuss a new form of capitalism, and then I will also discuss uh, diplomacy and security policies. First, about the responses to uh, COVID-19. In uh, implementing the policies, uh, the biggest uh, concern for us is the new variant, Omicron variant. Omicron variant. This is a new variant, and the information of this new variant came to us at the end of last month. I immediately decided, because uh, I decided to be take, uh, I decided to take extreme caution because much was unknown about Omicron variant and thinking about the border protection measures. So I decided to suspend new entry of foreign nationals. That is the uh, stri most stringent border protection measures among G7 countries. So I raised uh, the level of uh, border protection measures. Because the risk of Omicron variant was unclear, I took extreme caution and I took this measure as an interim extraordinary measure. At this moment, the transmissibility or the risk of increase in severity of Omicron uh, variant, the scientific uh, evaluation on these have not been established yet. Therefore, the stringent uh, border protection measures concerning these measures, uh, I will keep on monitoring the situation in the year and the beginning of the new year. Uh, to decide what to do with this uh, border protection measures. By monitoring this situation in the year and the beginning of the year, I will consider what to do with this border protection measures to extend or not. But at the same time, uh, the uh, uh, infection containment measures in Japan will be pr should be promoted uh, powerfully in Japan. For all the infected cases, I will give the genome uh, evaluation or analysis of screening for early detection. We are doing this screening. In addition, those in close contact with the infected cases, we request them not to quarantine at home but rather quarantine for 14 days at lodging facilities. Those are the measures we are taking to contain the infection in Japan. In addition, on Friday last week, we announced a comprehensive measures to strengthen prevention and screening and early treatment. Uh, the important point is the uh, moving up of the uh, third round of vaccinations and expansion of the free of charge uh, screening and the diffusion of oral medication. 
This is the flaw of prevention, screening, and early treatment, which will be strengthened so that the, we will be prepared for the possible outbreak. This is the overall picture of the uh, 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 infection response. Even if there's an outbreak, when we look at back at summer this year, Uh, the new cases was so over 20,000 a day at that time. Even if the transmissibility of this Omicron uh, 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 strain is double uh, that uh, compared to that time, we should be able to respond by securing 37,000 uh, beds and 3,000 uh, medical nursing professionals and healthcare workers can be mobilized. We are establishing such a system to respond to the possible outbreak. Those, the border measures will be maintained at the same time. Within Japan, we try to contain the infection. And within Japan, various preparedness for the possible outbreak of the infection. Those are the things we are promoting. Under such a system, we will continue monitoring the Omicron variants uh, uh, move. And as we continue our efforts, there will be people who will be affected uh, negatively for their livelihoods and work because of this COVID-19. So the other day, we came up with the economic measures to overcome COVID-19 and pioneer a new era with the size of 78.9 trillion yen. And then uh, the supplementary budget to support this economic measure was passed the other day, this week. Uh, I ask you, uh, the Japanese people, to cooperate. But we have to protect the, the livelihoods of these people. And together, we will face this uh, uh, crisis or the difficulties on a national scale. I would like uh, many people to understand this situation. Of course, we have to uh, react to the matters, assuming the worst always. That's my mindset. That's the preparedness for COVID-19. Under such system, there's this battle against COVID-19. We have to win this battle. We have to fight through this battle. Without doubt, if we are united, we can successfully fight through this battle and win. That's what I believe. Together with the Japanese people, let us strive forward economic and social activities uh, with the uh, uh, under normal times, that's what we, I would like to recover. The economic and social activities uh, close to the normal times, if we can recover that, our economy, our society, the vitality and activities can be recovered or regenerated. And that's the direction we have to move forward. Uh, we have to tackle the regeneration of the Japanese economy at that time. Uh, for that uh, purpose, I came up with this idea of this new economic model called new form of capitalism. The basis of, let me talk about the basis of this idea. The capitalism that humankind created has continued to evolve by constantly adjusting subtle balance between efficient allocation of resources and responding to external diseconomy brought about by the market failure. And uh, efficient allocation of resources was made through markets, but at the same time in the past, uh, pollution, public pollution, and other external uh, diseconomy was brought about, and we had to respond to that. And taking a good balance between these two, making corrections, adjustment between these two, 
by doing this adjustment, the capitalism has evolved and uh, served as the engine for growth for the economy. Now, the capitalism, well, since 1980s, there was this neoliberal approach which was taken. If everything will go well, if we leave uh, everything to the market and competition, that's the idea, which started in 1980s. And this approach became the mainstream in the world since 1980s. Well, this capitalism became the engine for growth of the world economy, but as the capitalism globalized, various harmful effects started to appear. Over-reliance on markets brought about disparities and poverty. Too much burden on natural environment worsen climate change issues. Those are the things people point, pointed out. Uh, all the countries in the world are trying to find a new model of uh, capitalism in order to respond to these harmful effects. At the background, there this idea that the widening disparity and poverty uh, and they, they impaired a large middle class, uh, threatening the sound democracy, supported and nurtured by the middle class. That there's a sense of crisis in the U.S. Uh, there's build back better idea, and in you, this next generation in you. Those policies are the examples of a movement to explore a new model for capitalism. And my uh, idea of the new form of capitalism is in the same vein with the US and EU in this respect. When we look around the world, the capitalism is uh, facing a powerful challenge from economic regime, which can be called state capitalism, mainly in authoritarian countries. In order to counter such challenges, we need to upgrade our capitalism. That's the uh, uh, sense of uh, issue, awareness of issue. In the past, the evolution of capitalism started or originated in the West. In Japan, if we can realize the new form of capitalism early, then I would like to lead the world this time around in the evolution of the capitalism this time. With that in mind, with the top leaders of the world, I would like to share the awareness of the issues, and I would like to contribute proactively to the global discussions. Thus, talking about new form of capitalism, you might ask, what is different from conventional capitalism? What are the features? In fact, at the budget, uh, committee of uh, both houses of the Diet, and that was one of the most frequently asked questions by the opposition parties. Of course, being the, uh, the new form of capitalism, I would say that this is aiming for realizing sustainable economic growth by way of virtual cycle of the growth and distribution. Well, that's what has been uh, discussed in the past, but uh, Instead of just leaving everything, including growth and distribution, to the market, I advocate that the both the public and private sectors should work together in considering the, the growth and distribution. And this new form of capitalism, the failure of the market and external this economies is going to be embedded into the scheme of uh, capitalism and from the points of view of growth strategy and distribution strategy so that we can maximize the benefits brought about by capitalism. Take, for example, growth. In fact, uh, the 
It has to do uh, with uh, the, the requirement for changing our mindset uh, to turn our drawbacks into a strength. Like, for instance, digitalization. Japan is said to be uh, behind uh, many of the countries and uh, climate change that requires the more intensified efforts, economic security, and that's also being advocated. In view of those challenges and issues that are currently identified, we have to turn them into strength of ours. Digital technology, a green economy, economic security. For those areas to be turned into strength, the government is there to offer various support, including funding support. And then show uh, the future direction uh, with potential huge market and inducing uh, investment from private sector. With that, we expect to overcome the challenges and uh, drawbacks that we have. I mentioned about the failures of the capitalism or side effects of capitalism, such as uh, climate change. By overcoming them, uh, we aim for carbon neutral that requires major transformation of the society. And for that, the national government is there to uh, create an environment that is conducive to that, invite investment from the private sector, so that this will become a major engine of growth. That's exactly what I mean by transforming drawbacks or weakness into strength. And the such growth strategy to transform weakness into strength is something that we want to design and develop together with the, the private sector. And that uh, would lead to a new form of uh, capitalism and talking about distribution. Instead of uh, some party monopolizing the fruit of growth, it has to be widely shared and distributed uh, by a, a population and not just uh, the big enterprises, but also SMEs and uh, as well as uh, local economies, the fruits of the growth have to be shared and distributed across different stakeholders. And that would uh, then lead to the next round of growth. And that's where we have to consider how we can effectively distribute the fruits by both public and private sectors. And in this context, the income of the uh, citizens, the population is important, and to raise the wage, what is uh, categorized as uh, the, uh, of the officially announced the prices, including the, uh, the medical nursing, nursing care, and uh, the kindergarten professionals. The, for those uh, professions, uh, we are now asking for 3% uh, wage hike. And of course, uh, the, those uh, successful companies uh, can uh, consider wage hike. And large enterprises as well as SMEs, uh, their relationship as the as a part of supply chain is where we can also consider the allocation of uh, profits. And that kind of scheme or mechanism has to be developed. And through that, we expect to realize uh, the wage increase. So wage hike, that is a distribution uh, to of the benefits uh, to the people. It used to be considered as a cost, but it is not the cost, but rather it is an investment for the future. With that kind of mindset, their distribution has to be achieved. Digital transformation and green transformation represent major wave of changes and a source of uh, the new value creation has to do with human resources. They are the ones that would create new values, and uh, therefore their value is even more important. Thus, investment to human resources has to be made, which could uh, turn into uh, the uh, investment. And then 
uh, that would uh, then lead to the uh, another round of growth. So uh, the, the new form of capitalism is comprising the both uh, the distribution and the growth strategies and embed the mechanism uh, to rectify the various challenges uh, coming from the side effects of cap capitalism so that uh, the various side effects of capitalism such as uh, the pollution, climate change, and disparities, uh, they should be redressed and rectified uh, through the mechanism that will be incorporated as a part of the new form of capitalism. This is a model that we advocate um, from Japan. And with that, we hope to lead the global economy. With that strong determination, I hope to promote such concept. And also, there is another aspect that I need to touch on. That is about the diplomacy and security. As I have been saying on diplomacy and security, freedom, uh, democracy, rule of law, human rights, uh, free trade, and uh, freedom of navigation, those are uh, the values that the world has been upholding. That is a universal value. By upholding these values, Japan should proceed with our diplomacy. That's the first pillar. Second pillar, there's this uh, uh, climate change issues, uh, there's this global issues which are mounting in front of us. Uh, climate change issues, uh, nuclear disarmament, uh, nuclear non-proliferation, uh, medical uh, challenges, uh, including COVID-19 responses, and disaster prevention and management. Those are the global level issues. Against these global issues, what well, we need to be able to contribute, uh, uh, we need to uh, have a say and make clear that we can contribute. That's the second pillar. The third pillar is under a very strict and harsh uh, security environment. Uh, Japanese nationals' livelihoods and the property and uh, Japanese uh, independence have to be protected by our diplomacy and security policies. The uh, lives and livelihoods of the people have to be protected by the diplomacy and the security policy. That's the third pillar. Uh, uh, there's a rapid change, uh, big changes in the diplomatic, uh, the in the world. Uh, situation. I, I became the foreign minister in 2012. It's been 10 years then, and the world has uh, uh, undergone uh, drastic changes. And uh, Japan has to advance with our diplomacy. Uh, there's a, d a need for deft uh, steering of uh, diplomacy and security policies. Uh, and uh, the establishment of the stable government is called for. Uh, there's this Kochikai faction, policy-making faction, that I have uh, 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 been uh, uh, associated with. Uh, they upheld this uh, diplomacy based on realism, or Hida diplomacy for normalizing ties between China and uh, China, uh, Japan, and Miyazawa administration coming up with the PKO law. And I inherited uh, this realistic uh, diplomacy as a backbone. And against uh, this international situation, which is becoming complicated in the 21st century, I would like to uphold uh, the banner of ideal for the future. That is to say, I would like to promote the realistic uh, uh, diplomacy in the new era. And there are pillars for that. That is to say, universal values and global issues and protection of the lives and livelihoods of the Japanese people. Those are the three pillars. Pr protecting universal values, uh, uh, democracy, rule of law, uh, and uh, human rights, freedom, 
in my administration, in order to cope with the human rights uh, issue, I uh, appointed a special advisor to Prime Minister Gen Nakatani in charge of human rights. We need to protect fully the universal values, and appointing Mr. Nakatani is one example to show that resolve. Free and open Indo-Pacific is what Japan has advocated in international community. It is widely known now. And the free and open Indo-Pacific uh, initiative covering Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean for the peace and stability. This is a very important notion in this region freedom of navigation and free trade have to be protected. In order to do that, uh, the FOIP is a very important concept. And the linchpin is the Japan-U.S. Uh, relationship. As uh, early as possible, I would like to visit the United States to meet with the President of the United States. And uh, we are making schedule adjustments now. Through these uh, measures, I talked about earlier the economic measures, nation, uh, state capitalism, what can be called state capitalism emerged, I said earlier. In the field of diplomacy, China, Russia, how Japan should face these countries against the backdrop of universal value, we need to seriously consider this. We need to say what needs to be said for sure, but at the same time, our neighbor, China, Russia, we need to maintain stable relationship with them. At least a dialogue has to be maintained. This is a very uh, complicated maneuvering that is required against the backdrop of the universal value. That is how the diploma, diplomacy should be. And second pillar, the global issues. For example, climate change. This is uh, one of the big issues for international community by carbon neutrality by 2050. That's a target for Japan, and we need to proceed toward that. And the, the creation of nuclear free world, that is uh, the nuclear disarmament and nuclear non-proliferation, uh, that is the ideal and that is part of my life work. Thus, as I am from Hiroshima, I have Terada Minoru, the member of the House of Representatives, who, who uh, is uh, the second generation of uh, Abom victims. And he was appointed as the special advisor to prime minister. And uh, the, he will be involved in various discussions, including NPT review conference. That's where we want to make a solid contribution to. Next month, NPT review conference will would take place for the first time after nearly seven years after postponement. The last time I was a foreign affairs minister and participated at that meeting. And uh, that was the first time for the Japanese uh, foreign affairs minister uh, to participate in PT review conference. But unfortunately, the first time in 10 years, I said, but uh, they unfortunately we could not uh, the produce a uh, the solid, uh, for instance, the outcome document uh, due to the uh, the, the existent uh, the gap between the nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states. If we want to change reality, then it is definitely required to involve nuclear weapon states and move them. Otherwise, uh, we cannot change the reality. That's what I always felt and experienced uh, during my uh, tenure as a foreign affairs minister. That is why we focus on NPT Review Conference, which is participated by uh, nuclear weapon states as well. 
that will lead to a practical way to realize nuclear non-proliferation and nuclear disarmament. And as we are determined uh, to uh, be actively participating in NPT review conference and to protect the life and livelihood of the people spending about a year that we have uh, developed uh, the security policies and we will make a fresh look at uh, various documents related to uh, those uh, the defense uh, documents uh, the 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 defense strategy was d produced uh, seven years ago when I was a foreign affairs minister but ever since the environment has changed so drastically in the past that we have never discussed economic security in the context of security. It was not the part of the strategy back then. And now, uh, the new challenges, including economic security, are the areas that we have to face squarely, together with the missile and other technologies and that are drastically changing and evolving to protect life and livelihood of the people. We have to consider various options, including the capacity to attack enemy bases. We should not exclude any options and then realistically consider what could be implemented. So that's the area that we want to work hard to protect life and livelihood of the people. I realize that uh, I'm uh, the running close to the the time to close my uh, presentation. Therefore, I'd like to wrap up. I'd like to work on economic front as well as uh, diplomacy together with the uh, COVID pandemic. As a president of LDP, I have been always advocating the need for being engaged in discussion for revision of constitution. Now, uh, the, the diet is going to be the major uh, the venue for discussing the revision of constitution, and we need to gain understanding of the public in order to further advance uh, the discussion there. So those are the policies that uh, we want to pursue, but most importantly, in implementing those measures or policies, it is definitely required to gain uh, the trust and empathy in front of the public. Without that, we cannot uh, pursue any policies. Thus, we should the heed to voices of the people and should be engaged in politics attentively with modesty. When we consider how we can gain trust of the people, of course, how to be engaged in politics, that is important. But more than that, the ODP itself has to change to regain trust and confidence of the people. Therefore, at the time of the presidential election of LDP, I advocated uh, the a party reform, including the introduction of the age limit to party officials, uh, the recruiting uh, young uh, members, uh, the, the new scheme for policy formulation, among others. Uh, by undertaking such party reform, we should uh, be able to gain trust and confidence of the people so that we can promote the policies that I have just elaborated on. Only nine days are left before the return of the uh, or dawn of the next year. Uh, we should uh, be productive in working on various fronts, first and foremost, COVID pandemic, so that the economy would be back to normal path. And then on top of that, or beyond that, there will be the election of House of Councillors. We should uh, make a victory there, fighting through and win it, so that we can uh, be there to show the path to the future. So uh, we should be always aware of the schedule for various political implications for next year, and we would continue our efforts, and I ask for your continued support and understanding in that endeavor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Prime Minister. 
Now we'll uh, uh, start Q&A session. The time is limited. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and wait uh, until I call your name. And uh, please uh, identify yourself, your name, and your affiliation before you ask a question. Mikey Sun. My name is Mikey, editor in chief of Yomiuri newspaper. Thank you very much. Prime Minister, you wrapped up your uh, 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 presentation, uh, coroner responses and uh, diplomacy and economic measures and uh, security issues. I have uh, questions for three items. That's three questions in total. Uh, responses to COVID-19. When you assumed the post of the Prime Minister, since then, uh, securing hospital beds uh, is uh, the point that you worked on. And the other day, 37,000 uh, capacity, uh, 37,000 peop uh, 37, people can be hospitalized, and 46,000 uh, beds were secured. And just like uh, the summer, uh, uh, we wouldn't like to uh, 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 repeat the mistake of having ghost hospital beds, so to speak, bogus uh, beds. In order to make this effective, probably a certain uh, uh, level of enforcement, uh, for example, the revision of the related uh, uh, laws and regulations or special measures law. Are you thinking of these revisions in the ordinary session next year? Now, about the economic uh, uh, measures, about this new form of capitalism that you mentioned. The formulation of the budget is coming to the final stage. The harmful effects of the capitalism has to be corrected, and uh, the mechanism to correct that uh, should be embedded, you said. In formulating budget and the ordinary session of the diet next year toward that uh, time, uh, specific measures like uh, in addition to uh, the wage increase uh, tax reform, any other specific measures uh, that you would like to uh, uh, realize early. Third uh, question about the diplomacy and security. You talked about the NPT review conference uh, with uh, passion. You talked about that. Specifically, in order to make it effective, a specific mechanism is uh, required, in my view. For a long time, you have served as the foreign minister, and I'm sure you have strong feelings about this. Any specific measures or mechanism that you are thinking of in this respect? Those are my questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I received three questions about the hospital beds. As you rightly said, uh, uh, even if we secured uh, uh, the hospital beds, uh, the occupancy, if the occupancy is not good, that, that doesn't mean much. So in this uh, response, Local governments, uh, between local governments and medical institutions, there should be something in writing to secure the hospital beds. And by each hospital, the occupancy of each hospital uh, beds has to be visualized to raise the level of occupancy. It's called Kanagawa method in Kanagawa Prefecture by setting up this. Uh, Kanagawa Prefecture successfully raised the occupancy rate. Probably we can uh, replicate this somewhere else. And in the government, we are thinking of uh, coming up with the mechanism to secure the hospital beds and to raise the occupancy rate. Even if the transmissibility doubles, we would be able to respond. That is the situation toward June. Any idea about the revision of the laws, you, said, you asked? Next year, by June next year, the flow of people and the relationship between central government and local governments and the uh, control tower function, those are the three points that we will review uh, past uh, uh, responses to COVID-19. If there are uh, revisions to be made uh, to the laws, we will do that. Towards June, we will continue verification 
we look back at what we did as a response to COVID-19. If there is a necessary revision to the law, we will do that. We will consider that in the budget. In the capitalism, the harmful effects of the capitalism has to be removed, and there should be a mechanism to be embedded in the capitalism itself. Uh, which, in addition to the wage increase tax reform, but other things. For the wage increase, it's not only a tax reform, but uh, uh, the price increase of the public procurement or the subcontracting uh, 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 relationship review. Those are the things we are considering. And in the growth, there are mechanisms to be built in to remove the harmful effects, climate changes and digitalization, which is a weak point for Japanese society, we will uh, face them squarely and to try to turn them into the engine of growth. And the government will take the lead to create a new uh, big market for this. Consolidating power of the private sector, we can turn this into the engine of growth. That's what I think. That's. Uh, another mechanism to overcome the harmful effects of the capitalism, and that mechanism should be built into the capitalism itself. So through these different mechanisms, we try to uh, uh, achieve the virtuous cycle of uh, uh, growth and distribution. About the NPT review conference for NPT, in the discussion of NPT, well, it has been the case that the CTBT, that's a comprehensive uh, treaty on the banning of the nuclear tests and FMCT, Fissile Materials uh, Treaty, that's uh, con to control the fissile materials with the US. Up until Clinton administration in the International Committee, the discussions took place on these matters, the, the framework is the NBT uh, first banning uh, the nuclear tests, and then, well, we can assume the proliferation through terrorism. So the fissile materials itself has to be controlled in the international community. There has been a discussion on this, and that discussion has to be revived or to be remembered. Uh, not going uh, in one stride to the uh, a uh, treaty to uh, ban the nuclear weapons. Let's go back and remember what we have discussed so far. I think that's one of the important ideas. In order to raise uh, the effectiveness, the basics uh, is the trust between nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states, and then it's backed by transparency. NPDI, that's the nuclear, non-nuclear weapon states uh, dialogue. And there was this meeting in uh, Hiroshima. I led the discussion as a prime minister. And one of the most important idea in that framework is that uh, transparency of the nuclear weapon states, how many, how much weaponry, nuclear weaponry they have. And we uh, formulated the format of reporting so that the nuclear weapon states can disclose uh, their uh, uh, situation. Unfortunately, there's only one country which didn't respond at all, but many countries uh, 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 accepted the idea of disclosing their nuclear uh, weapon status. So we need to uh, proceed with the discussion uh, while promoting the transparency. Thank you very much. As time is running out, with that, I'd like to conclude this lecture meeting. I'd like to express appreciation by a big round of applause to uh, Prime Minister Kishida. Thank you very much for your attention.